Hello, in this video we're going to talk about septic arthritis. This is an introduction and overview. With any monoarthritic presentation, it is important to rule out septic arthritis, as this can cause irreversible damage to the joint. Signs and symptoms of septic arthritis include fever, monoarthritis, which means one inflamed joint. Inflammation of the joint is characterized by warmth, redness, erythema, pain, and decreased in function or range of movement. The person presenting with an inflamed joint requires a thorough history and examination. For septic arthritis, the main causative agents include Staphylococcus aureus, Group A Streptococcus, and Neisseria gonorrhea, which is a sexual transmitted bacteria. A quick recap of the pathogenesis of septic arthritis. Here is an inflamed joint. A skin infection such as that from Staphylococcus aureus can disseminate into the joint causing septic arthritis. Osteomyelitis, which is inflammation infection of the bone marrow, usually caused by Staphylococcus aureus, again, can locally invade the joint causing septic arthritis. Upper respiratory tract infections or lower respiratory tract infections from group A streptococcus can hematogenously go to the bone causing osteomyelitis which then can lead to septic arthritis. Alternatively, there can also be an STI from Necessaria gonorrhea that can disseminate into the joint causing septic arthritis. Procedures such as injections to the joint space can introduce bacteria into the joint, causing septic arthritis. Further, it's important to consider surgery as a cause of septic arthritis. During surgery, bacteria may enter the joint from skin or from aseptic techniques. Again, with monoarthritis, any monoarthritic presentation, it's important to rule out septic arthritis. It is a surgical emergency with greater than 24 hours leading to irreversible joint damage. Investigations to be performed in a person presenting with monoarthritis include a full blood count, C-reactive protein, ESR to check for signs of inflammation and infection. A joint aspiration is usually indicated for any for a monoarthritic presentation. The joint aspiration will also need to be cultured microscopy, cultural, and sensitivity. It's important to also do blood cultures if you suspect systemic infections or bacteremia. Also perform electrolyte urea creatinine and glucose. Finally, imaging including ultrasound and x-ray can also be done. X-ray may reveal subluxation or dislocation of the joint, and there is joint space widening because of the swelling and inflammation occurring within the joint itself. After performing the investigations, notably cultures and joint aspiration, administration of broad-spectrum antibiotics is priority. Then, surgical emergency is needed involving joint drainage, usually joint aspiration, arthroscopic drainage, or open drainage. Once cultures have come back and results are obtained, from the joint aspiration or blood cultures, antibiotics can be tailored towards the causative agent. These antibiotics are given typically two weeks with IV, then changing to oral antibiotics for four weeks. Follow-up and monitoring is also important throughout this whole time.